Hello lovelies, in this video we're going through the problems monitoring climate change for your A level in environmental science. Now to go with this video we've written an example essay, a level 5 25 mark essay um, example to show you bring in all the knowledge here, how we can structure our paragraphs I, I want AOT, AO3. If you're in the playlist, it's going to be the next video down. If you're in the masterclass or the boot camp, then it's going to be in the next section down. So you can have a go at that, as well as flashcards and multiple choice questions once you finish this video. Lesson four, problems with monitoring climate change. Firstly, when we look at the Earth's past climate data, then we notice that the climate has been fluctuating naturally long before the Industrial Revolution and increased combustion of fossil fuels. Knowing this can make it difficult to know what proportion of the changes we are seeing currently are natural fluctuations and what proportion is the result of human activity. This can make it difficult when planning which laws and regulations need to be put into place as some changes in climate could be natural. Another challenge is the fact that climate systems are so heavily interconnected, for example, the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. Normally, a change can happen in the atmosphere that also causes changes in the hydrosphere, and it's hard to distinguish where the change started and why. For example, the changing ocean currents could be a result of temperature changes, or wind patterns, or density of seawater. It would be difficult to definitively prove which specific one it was. Furthermore, the changes we see happen over a range of time and spatial scales. For example, changes can occur on a local, national or international scale and can happen quickly or over a prolonged period of time. We may see a greater change in temperature on a local scale for some areas of the world, but lower changes on an international scale and local changes may be noticed faster than international changes, even if they were caused by the same factor. Scientists find it difficult to pinpoint the exact cause of changes, both locationally and temporally. Another reason we find monitoring climate difficult is there is often a time delay between cause and effect. Essentially, this means that we may see a change happening, for example, increased tropical storms, which is the effect, which could have been caused by multiple changes that started a long time ago, for example, temperature increases. This difficulty is further amplified by the fact that climate factors are so intricately interconnected and scientists will therefore struggle to identify the original change that caused the increase in storms but also when the change happened. Climate systems are also driven by positive and negative feedback mechanisms. These mechanisms either enhance a change or reverse it depending on the feedback loop. Consequently, making climate monitoring even more challenging as you need to be able to understand the feedback mechanisms to be able to identify the effects they are having on the data you are collecting. An example of this is the effect of plant photosynthesis on rising temperatures as higher temperatures create a faster growth rate so more carbon is sequestered, reducing the temperature as there are less greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. However, Deforestation is reducing the number of plants and trees able to sequester carbon, so this would also need to be taken into account. Finally, we rely quite heavily on proxy data to know about past climates. This is because historical data is known for being quite inaccurate due to lack of technology and containing lots of gaps due to lack of cooperation between researchers. As a result, we have little to no historical data for some areas on the composition of the atmosphere, past temperatures and weather patterns. Because of this, we rely heavily on proxy data or indirect data, such as tree growth rings and pollen grain analysis to help us estimate past climates. Exam top tip, revisit the methods to monitor Earth's climate in the conditions for life on Earth video to revise historical data and proxy data. In summary, more modern methods allow us to collect long-term data sets, use electronic monitoring equipment which can be calibrated for accuracy, collaborate globally to ensure no gaps in data, and collect data on a range of abiotic conditions. One example we haven't mentioned yet is what techniques we use to monitor the ocean. The velocity and position of surface ocean currents can be monitored using satellites and buoys floating on the water surface. 
It is important that we measure these factors as slowing currents or currents that have changed position or direction, which can lead to changes in the climate and can also signify that events such as El Nino or La Nina are happening. The deep ocean can be monitored using equipment called Argo floats. These devices will sink to a programmed depth for a set amount of time before floating to the surface to transmit the data back to the laboratories using satellites. Data can be collected on a range of abiotic factors such as temperature, pH and salinity. Having multiple Argo floats in different positions across the globe can then provide a bigger overview of what is happening in our oceans and where the most threatened areas are. This may help us to prioritise conservation of certain areas that need it most based on the organisms that we find there. Some we may rely on heavily in the fishing industry, for example. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.